Hello everyone, today we're going to look at a game between Alexander Hoffman versus Alexander Petrov, played in 1844 Warsaw. So Alexander Hoffman is white and Alexander Petrov is black, and we're going to look at it from black's perspective. There's so many crazy tactical ideas here, I think it's worth a look at. Anyway, Hoffman kicks off with 1e4, Petrov plays e5. I'm getting to knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, and bishop c5, and c3 from Hoffman. And here Petrov plays knight to f6, attacking the e4 pawn. Hoffman opts for d4 here. And notice attacks a bishop on c5 and attacks a pawn on e5. And also threatens to push to d5 if necessary. Here Petrov took on d4 and now we're getting some weird complications. So c takes d4 is an option for white and play would probably continue with something like bishop b4 which is the main move. Followed by bishop d2 captures and then d5 takes takes castles castles and we're into a quite an even game so this was an option that Petrov and Hoffman could have opted for instead after e takes d4 Hoffman opted for e5 another main move and here Petrov opted to play knight to e4 d5 is another move here which could be played and if uh, white captures this black can just capture on d6 and is now black is actually a pawn up so this would be terrible for white Bishop b5 is another move, and then black can play knight to e4, c takes d4, and just bishop to b6, where it keeps an eye on that d4 pawn. Knight c3, castles and bishop to e3. It's quite an even game again, and chances for both sides. In the game after e5 though, Petrov now played knight to e4. A very aggressive move, focusing fire on the f2 square with the bishop and knight if that d pawn ever moves. Hoffman also opted for an aggressive approach, he played bishop to d5 here, attacking the knight on e4, and also we're going to take that pawn on d4 if necessary. Petrov actually went for the jugular straight away, he now sacrificed his knight on f2. Knight takes f2, and white's forced to take that, so king takes, and black now follows up with d takes c3, check. So let's just momentarily look at this position. We see that black's now got three pawns for the piece and the king's in check and forced to move and black's most likely going to swap off another pawn on b2 after the king moves so black's actually a piece down but white's king is now susceptible to many attacks so it will make for an interesting game as you'll see if king f1 here black could follow up with c takes b2 bishop takes b2 d6 and after captures and captures we're in for quite an interesting game. So in this position we'll have to see who would come out on top. Would it be black with the many pawns or white with the extra piece? White actually opted for the best move in this position. He played king to g3. It looks a bit weird because it's putting the king forward into the attack of black's position. But the computer gave it as the best move. So here black followed up with c takes b2. So gain another pawn, may as well. Bishop takes b2. And now knight to e7. Threatening the bishop on d5, and also threatening knight f5 here, check. So the position is relatively even here, and this is where white actually blundered. h3 would have been a fine move for white to play now. So it's a piece up, and it's time to consolidate a bit. After h3, castles and queen c2. If black now plays d6 to try and develop, the bishop can play it to e4. And after a few developing moves from both sides, to gain some consolidation. It seems that white's actually doing quite well here. The bishop on e4 is quite a good piece. The only problem for white is that his king's quite susceptible to attacks. But other than that, white's pieces are relatively nicely developed here, so I'm surprised Hoffman didn't opt for a calmer approach in this particular position right here. Instead he followed up straight away with knight to g5. And Petrov here could have actually punished this with knight to f5. This is now a computer line that I looked at. So after knight to f5, the knight's under attack on g5. King f4 is forced to protect it. And now just follows up castles for black. And if uh, white now starts capturing more pieces, which looks very dangerous, d6 we played here with check. If the king moves backwards, we've got another check on e5. If the bishop takes on e5, black now has this amazing move. Bishop to e3 check. The king's forced to take and black gets his pieces into the game with queen takes g5. If bishop f4, rook e8 check. And if bishop e4, black can now sack, rook takes e4, 
And once the king captures, we can take on g2 as black. And after king d3 and bishop g4, black's now fully developed. But what we must know is that black's now a piece, two pieces down, a rook and a, uh, a knight. But black now has a major attack. Because after a move like queen d2, moving away from that bishop, Rook d8 can be played, after king c3, and move like queen c6, king b4, rook takes d2, knight takes d2. Black's doing really well because now there's a lot of checks that can be played, after a5, king b3, b6, queen, king c2, and check, and check. And after king a3, queen takes f4, you have to say black's in the driving seat. White's got two rooks for the queen, and a knight, and black's got a bishop. However, black now has four extra pawns and it'll be so easy to use one of these to make another queen. So perhaps black should have opted for this variation with knight to f5 right here. He's a very long and tactical computer line though, so I forgive Petrov for not seeing that one. I'll give him credit. Anyway, Petrov here continued knight takes d5, getting rid of white's most aggressive piece. Now white actually took on f7 with the knight. If uh, queen takes d5, obviously, queen takes g5 and black just wins back the piece and they have an extra few pawns, so obviously white wants to do that. Instead, after knight takes d5, we see knight takes f7. And we don't want to see king takes here because then just queen takes d5 and white's going to win another piece. So instead, Petrov castle here, king side. And now we're attacking the knight again. But also just left Petrov just left his queen on pre, interestingly enough. And why did he do that? Well, it turns out after knight takes d8, there's now a forced mate. So, this is all forced. Petrov played bishop f2 check. King h3. And now d6, unleashing this bishop on c8 against the king. e6 was played. But now Petrov comes in with knight to f4 check. The king has only got one more square, g4. And now Petrov captures on e6 with the knight. If knight takes e6 here, then just bishop takes e6. The king's forced to h5. Rook f5 can be played. If king g4, h5. And after king h3, rook f3 is checkmate due to the double attack from the bishop and the rook. So knight takes e6 is not an option. Instead, Hoffman now tries to find some space with g3, trying to blunt this bishop on f2. But this doesn't seem to work. There's two mo options here that black could actually play. Knight takes d8 is an option with check. And if the king moves to h5, we can, again we can play rook, this rook lift, rook f5. If king g4, rook f6, check from bishop on c8. So the king's forced to move again. And now rook f4 again. The pawn can't capture because the pawn's pinned from the bishop. And if we move like queen g4, just rook takes king h3, rook takes g3, double check again. The king is just in an absolutely terrible position. And there's a force mate with bishop to e3, and that's checkmate. So knight takes d8, check was an option in this position. But Petrov found an equally good move. Knight d4 now, with check from the bishop once again. And the king's pretty much trapped, there's no defenders for it. It's all on its own in the center of the book, in the middle of the board. Knight e6, that's how desperate white is now, he's got to sack back this piece. Bishop takes e6. And Hoffman now plays king h4. And black gets all his pieces into the game. Knight to f5, look at these four pieces attacking this king on its own. King h3, trying to get to the g2 square for safety, but it's too little too late. Knight to e3 covers this square, and bishop again checks it. King h4. And now knight g2, where black's forced the king forward again. So it can take its pick here. King g5 runs into bishop to e3, queen h5, and g6, checkmate. And if king h5 for white, then just comes g6, king g5, and bishop to e3, checkmate. What an absolutely masterful game from Petrov. And all this started from a simple knight takes f2. Who would have thought the king would have ended up so far at the board? Obviously it was this knight g5 move right here from Hoffman that caused a lot of problems for white. It doesn't look like black's pieces can spring into attack so quickly. 
But again, surprisingly, after this knight takes d5 move and knight takes f7 and just castles, we can see now that black's got a lot of pieces in the attack. Especially if white wastes a tempo taking this queen. This is an absolutely masterful game from Petrov and really impressive. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video and I'll post more chess related videos very soon. Thanks very much.